pain. Have you ever wondered at any moment in your life why pain just won't go away? Let's start with the human body. It is a complex maze of veins, arteries, muscles, all vehicles for conveying impulses, be it pain or a pleasurable feeling. Congenital insensitivity to pain is a medical condition where even though the sufferer has got perfectly normal intelligence, he's unable to feel pain. From a, an ordinary cigarette light, the sufferer could get a first degree bone just because they can't feel any sensation. Bones will shatter because pain sent through the central nervous system to progressively warn us as the pressure of an impulse become a little too much to bear, thereby helping us withdraw to safety, will not be picked up. Imagine the miserable lives that two American brothers, Steve and Chris Pitt, had to endure because they were born with this condition. As children, no one would let them go out to play with other children for fear that they might get fatally injured just because they can't feel pain. As a toddler, Steve chewed off nearly a quarter of his, of his tongue while he was teething. He would have a broken bone. He wouldn't notice for days until a swelling and an x-ray confirmed it. The consequences thereof can only be left to our imagination if he ever had appendicitis. Sadly, the early warning signs of appendicitis is pain. And this is Steve's worst fear. Now a full-grown adult married with three children, Steve had gone to apply for some sort of disability support. Well, guess what the judge told him? If you're in no pain, then you're in no business of getting any kind of support. How ironic. We can learn from this example that one of the benefits of pain is awareness. Awareness that picks you to action. Awareness that helps you withdraw to safety. Awareness that compels you to take life-saving decisions that you otherwise wouldn't have taken, but for pain. Beyond the human quest for dignity, beyond the desire for human freedom, it is possible to argue that one of the catalysts for human emancipation in history is pain. Pain that brings you to that point where you say, I just can't take this anymore. The gory extermination of nearly one million Jews in the gas chambers of the World War II Nazi concentration camp at Treblinka readily comes to mind. The excruciating ordeal that they had to endure peaked at the moment when pain that comes from awareness, or rather awareness that comes from pain, spurred them to action, such that on the 2nd of August, 1943, 600 of those surviving Jews moved against their captors, stole their guns, stole their grenades, fought back, burned down the camps, and fled to the nearby Polish forests to freedom. Is it not possible to see that pain brings such awareness to the point that we should start to see optimism as that thinking that things can't get any worse than they already are. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Achinike Ibegwe. I grew up like any average Nigerian child. I would like to see myself as moderately introverted, highly driven, Yet, is it going? In fact, Achinike in Ikwe literally means slow and steady. Those who know me closely can attest to this. 
So you can imagine. And I wouldn't really claim that I was raised in abject poverty. It would be unfair for me to say that. But I knew lack while I was growing up. And so you can imagine the excitement, especially for my father, when in the autumn of 2007, a scholarship availed itself for me to study for a doctorate in naval architecture at the Newcastle University. Wow. The son of a welder, a PhD. Can somebody wake me up, please? But nothing in this world prepared me for the challenges that lay ahead. I came to realize very quickly that a PhD is a long, dark, torturous, winding expedition. If you ask me, a wild goose chase. And so the three and a half years I spent on this journey has turned out to be the, the most hellish days of my life yet. As a PhD student, you normally don't have classmates. So as you go deeper and deeper into your research, you will realize that you don't have anyone to turn to for academic support. Even my supervisor, a professor of marine structures, couldn't help much. So it was every man to himself. I recall how it took six long months to debug a small section of my computer program. You don't want to imagine the frustration. But the funny thing is, it gets so bad in winter that the short, gloomy days will very quickly fuse into the longer, chilly nights. It was all doom and gloom. In a foreign land, without friends, without family, you couldn't get lonelier. But the option of abandoning ship was not even there. Because I had a scholarship. And to abandon ship will mean to waste an opportunity that someone else would have very easily utilized. And so I trudged on. I endured. I survived. And the pleasure of an exciting career, potentially exciting career that I enjoyed today, would probably be a mirage if I hadn't responded positively to the discipline of pain, better than the discipline, or rather the pain of regret. Pain. Pain. What a violence. For starters, resilience. Resilience developed from enduring pain. The confidence that I have today that no problem is intractable. In fact, let's just say that I've gone full circle. Why then do we shortchange ourselves from not embracing pain and denying the benefits that it brings? We need to embrace pain because as a good book says, man is created for trouble. Mortals are born and bred for trouble, as certainly as sparks fly upwards, Job 5.7. But indeed, pain isn't only a tool for self-awareness. It is a marker. It is a measure of societal responsiveness to suffering. It is a window of opportunity for us to reach out to one another and jointly share in our experiences through empathy. And just as heat is the difference between iron and steel, so do we need pain, a little bit of it, if we must develop courage, confidence, character, without which we're unable to soar beyond our limitations. Where is God when it hurts? It's a book by Philip Yanzi. And in that book, he reckoned that working, he experienced working with hospice, with dying people, feeding them, sleeping with them. He realized that the first step in helping a dying man, a suffering man, is the fact that we ought to recognize that pain is real. 
and is worthy of a sympathetic response. Because with that, we can all measure our individualities and recognize the fact that our threshold for pain vary. If you ask Apostle Paul, he will tell you that the two, undeniably, the two most powerful pillars of life are patience and time. So if you persevere today, patience, then tomorrow you will heal time. And you will come to recognize that even your pain has a purpose, even though you don't see it right now. And you too can one day boldly declare that the suffering that I've endured in the past will help me succeed in the future. I am your witness.